Welcome back, nerds friends. Today, we're going to check out the Fusion. We've looked at the Fusion before, but anytime I have an opportunity to, what I'll say is, declapify a friend's RC car, I would like to do so. Uh, I've been riding a lot of motorcycles lately, made some motorcycle friends, a handful of them had RC cars, and they said they didn't work, stuff was wrong with them, they are missing pieces. I said, well, you know what, fellas, I can dial you in, and had them give me their cars. So I'm going to pull out the stock system from this uh, and do a unboxing and install on this Fusion so we can get a fresh look at what a Fusion is all about. So first things first, let's pop open the box and see what comes in your Fusion. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the Fusion, which I hope you're not, you get a motor that has a speed control built into the end of it. So it's a two-in-one combo. And all there is to this system is a motor with some wires coming out of the end of it. So there is your Fusion 2-in-1. These are available in two different KVs right now, a 1200 and an 1800. And it is a completely sealed motor for the most part. Any bearing is susceptible to that. So my pro tip is before you do an install on these, do like some axle grease, some ring grease. Even if you just do a little bit of extra bearing oil on the end, it'll help it last a lot longer. On the other end of the motor, you have your receiver wire or input harness, it's called. The switch button as well as the programming port and then of course your power wires that are huge also inside the box you get the programmer this comes with each and every fusion and this led program card will work on any speed control that works with an led program card uh, fly funds the max series the quick run series the difference is the sticker on the box doesn't match inside here is all the same they just put different stickers on them for different applications because these just display what's inside so if you have one of these for any speed control even not for your fusion or you have one from a 1080 whatever just look at the instruction manual your best friend in the whole wide world there's a chart inside here that'll tell you what all the settings mean for your speed control obviously these two match you also get some sweet hobby link stickers this is for your programmer it's a double-ended harness one side plugs into the where it says esc on your programmer and the other side plugs in to the button to do all the program we'll get into all that later and you also get an extension for the receiver harness in case your receiver is super far away it comes with a short extension so that you can get it all the way into the install you get some double side tape for the switch a couple zip ties now you do see it says 540 spec up here and that's referring to the motor itself the fusion is as long as a 550 size motor but it only has a 540 size power plant if you will of overall fusion because the speed controls in the end of it it adds a little bit of length folks always want to know the real size of stuff so uh we'll do it in metric because why not? We'll do both ways. So you see it's a 36 millimeter or 1.4 inches diameter, like any normal motor for the most part. On the length side of things, if we go all the way end to end, you have just under two and a half inches or 63 millimeters. The shaft is about, looks like a 0.6. Or about 16 millimeters probably so I'm gonna prep the truck and we'll get into the install Okay, so we got the system that was in there out. Turns out the receiver case is missing the bottom and they just kind of stuck it back in there. But I did have to make some small modifications to the battery tray and this receiver tray. I just used a set of regular body scissors and I cut the battery tray right along that line and then down across to the opening and then just across like on the other side of this guy here. And it just allows the motor to sit in there. The batteries are never really this long, so it's not gonna have an issue. In fact, I may even put 
a little standoff here to stop the battery from sliding back and bumping into the motor, but it's really not a big deal. And the other one is just to make, get the motor to slide in without taking anything apart, there's like an antenna mount here that doesn't get used. So I snipped that off as well. And again, I just used the same body scissors that I used before, just, you know, just plastic. Now, it's gonna drop the motor in there. Should be able to use the stock pinion gear and the stock motor mounting screws, no problem. Now that we've made the clearances, this guy should go right in. There we go. So without the speed control plugged into the receiver and with the pinion gear not touching the motor, you can do a process called automatic motor pairing. And in an FOC system, it's unique in that they have this extra process that can be done to help set the sensors to the magnets. And that is what we're gonna do here. It is very straightforward. All right, so you plug in the battery, and then, it's, like I said, it's not plugged in the receiver, and the pinion gear is not connected to the spur gear. And then you'll press and hold. The little light will start to flash at you. And when it turns green flashing, you let go of the button. There it is. And you can see the motor's running on its own. That's the automatic motor pairing process happening. So usually it does like a ramp up and a ramp down. You can, maybe you can't hear it, but it, it speeds up a little bit and then it'll start to slow down, stop. ramps up and down and then it does a little spool up and it beeps at you that it's done. And that is the automatic motor pairing process or what I call the sensor reset. But that automatic motor pairing process is a way to clear any errors that may be going on with the FOC system. So it's a good idea to do it maybe before you install it and even if you have any issues after you've run it for a while and it seems fine, that, that automatic motor pairing process won't really hurt anything. So when you're setting gear mesh, you want to have the least amount of play in the gears while still having some play, like a slight kind of tick. I don't know if you can hear that, but just a very, very small amount of play in the gears. And then you want to snug the motor up, both of the screws, and then check all the way around. Make sure there's no super loose or super tight spots. There's nothing wrong with the gears or that stuff in them. Take a look at it, make sure there's not anything in there because that'll make a real bad time later on. I think I can go just a little bit tighter. Oh, that's a lot tighter. And then snug these guys all the way up. And then when you do the pinion gear, make sure that the set screw is on the flat of the motor. That's why I was messing around with that for so long. All right, seems good. I found a radio system that we can use for this. The radio system that was in there was um, non-functional. Universally, receivers are all kind of the same in that some of them have its throttle or steering mark. Others say one, two, three. Steering is always channel number one, throttle is always number two, is the general rule of thumb, and their black wire will go to the outside or thin edge, negative wire on these little plugs, go to the outside or thin edge. This particular receiver is marked throttle and steering, the speed control goes in the throttle, or number two, if you got a regular receiver, it doesn't say that. So for the calibration process, you wanna hook up a battery, obviously, make sure that you use at least a charge battery. All right, so to calibrate a fusion, it's a long press of the power button. It's gonna blink at you, you let go, and then you do these steps. It's pretty straightforward. Starts to blink, you let go, it's beeping, you set neutral, full throttle, full reverse, and that is it. Then your motor should work. We're going to hook up the programmer and talk about all that.
As we mentioned in the beginning, you're going to use the double-ended programmer harness. It goes into the ESC side. It's marked for polarity, and it's got a funny little squiggle. The funny little squiggle is where the white wire goes. Like that. And then on your fusion, on the front of it, don't lose this. You're going to need that, because if any water gets in there, that's a bad time. This is also marked, and the, the squiggly side is opposite the black side for the wires going in. So the white one's gonna go on this particular situation to that outside. Okay. And then the end battery's still plugged in. You tap the button and this, we'll just talk about what all these settings are and when you're gonna wanna change them. Most crawlers, when you get in here, the motor's gonna go backwards when you give it throttle. Don't reverse your radio to fix that. You're gonna use the motor rotation setting. So. RPM or throttle matching comes enabled and you want that for the most part and gives it that FOC sort of feel for the most part. If you want it to have a little bit of stall or not feel as good as an FOC feels, I guess, you can disable that setting. Uh, item number two is your LiPo cells. If you run two cell or three cell, leave it on auto. If you run a dedicated cell count, you can put it on that dedicated cell count. Fusion will run two cell or three cell, no problem. And then the next item is your cutoff voltage this is for the lipo it says low intermediate and high high is probably around like 3.7 per cell intermediate is probably about 3.5 per cell and then low is probably closer to 3.3 per cell what it does is it allows you to adjust how much runtime you get out of your battery or the safety of your battery as well some intermediate or high works great um, for most situations to keep the battery super safe so number four is the esc thermal protection and you could turn it off if you wanted to i always leave it on the lowest setting for safety because that's safer and then item number five is your motor rotation and this vehicle when i give it throttle the wheels go backwards so i'm going to change this one by tapping value and then you have to hit okay before you move so that it saves that uh, the next one is your bec voltage you can do six volts or 7.4 volts now pro tip even if you have 7.4 volt servos you can run them on six volts and the servos going to be a little bit weaker, a little bit slower, but it also won't get as hot. It'll kind of run, you might, might live a little longer, so to speak, because you're not pushing it as hard. Um, and then the next one is the drag brake force. Now, this is how strong your drag brakes are. When you let off the throttle, drag brakes apply the brakes when you're at neutral. So it's like heavier rigs you want very high, lighter rigs you might want low, or depending on how you want to drive the truck. Some people don't like to have that real grabby drag brake. So this helps you adjust that. I tend to leave them on five until I hear otherwise from the people that are driving it. Um, item number eight is your drag brake rate. Now, this is great because it controls how quick it applies the drag brake. So if you're driving kind of faster and you let off the throttle rapidly, it won't slam onto the drag brakes. And for that reason, I always set this to number one right away. Because when you're going slow, you really, you know, the drag brakes, even if they come on very slow, it's usually fine. So I'll hit OK to save that. And I like to run my drag brake rate down at number one just so that it, we tend to drive these things faster than slower sometimes. And then the next one is your max reverse force. Some people aren't very good with using reverse and turning that reverse power down can be helpful in making it kind of tame the beast or whatever you want to call that. But sometimes trucks don't need full reverse. They flip over because they're a bunch of nose weight. I always start out with it 100 and adjust from there. Uh, and then it loops back around to number one. And that is it. Since we hit OK between the saves, all we got to do now is turn it off and unplug it. And don't forget to put the rubber doohickey back in there to protect your switch. If you wanted to be extra safe about it, I mean, a little extra protection of this area won't hurt. Just put some double side tape over it, you know, seal the edges type of thing, and that'll help a lot. Turn it back on. And now when I give it throttle, or when I give throttle, forward is forward. Reverse is reverse. Fantastic. Well, there you have it, folks. That is basic unboxing and setup of a Fusion, kind of start to finish. Oh, don't forget, if you're in a podcast, we do a bi-monthly podcast. Check us out on your favorite podcast service. It's called RC Stuff, powered by Hobbywing. Myself, Jordan Temkin, and several guests do interviews about drone stuff, RC stuff, events that I get to attend, and a lot more. So we also do a giveaway on every single episode. So listen to a few episodes, then you'll figure out how to enter to win and you can win some free RC stuff from our podcast. If you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, please shoot us an email, northamerica at hobbywing.com. And as always, folks, thanks for watching.